Hey there! Hello! And once again, welcome to Bio Pandit. I am delighted to introduce myself as sort of your very own Maha Pandit. And today I am going to talk about intrinsically disordered proteins. Let us start with a 3D structure of a protein. You already know that there are at least three types of amino acids in a protein sequence hydrophobic, polar, and hydrophilic. In this contact map, you can see how these three types of residues physically interact with each other when the protein is folded. Protein folding is the process in which, in aqueous medium, starting from an unstructured denatured state, native residue-residue contacts are formed. Whether a protein can fold or not depends on whether formation of these native contacts is thermodynamically spontaneous in nature. Imagine two residues R1 and R2 interacting with each other in the process of folding. The free energy of their interaction has three components. Those include the electrostatic interaction energy between the two residues, the electrostatic interaction energy between the residues and the water molecules, and the entropy gain due to exclusion of water molecules to bulk water. Now, if you ask which of these terms contribute favorably and which do not contribute favorably to the free energy of interaction, then the answer is something like this. If the two residues are hydrophobic, their mutual interaction energy is negligible. Interaction energy with water is also negligible. Only the water exclusion entropy is favorable and this makes the interaction between two hydrophobic residues spontaneous. If the two residues are oppositely charged, then whether the interaction would be spontaneous or not depends on whether the favorable charge-charge attraction energy and water exclusion entropy can compensate the unfavorable residue water interaction energies. So, interaction between two opposite charges may or may not be spontaneous. As you may have guessed, Interaction between two similar charges is never spontaneous. Same goes for polar residues. Polar-polar interactions are generally not spontaneous. In a protein, there may be hundreds to thousands of such residue-residue interactions. A protein is able to fold into a specific 3D structure if collectively, the favorable contribution of hydrophobic residues can override the unfavorable contributions of charged and polar residues. In this case, the polypeptide chain does have a minimum free energy conformation, which is also its native conformation. The free energy of transition from unstructured state to this native state is negative, which means folding is spontaneous. But if collectively favorable contribution of hydrophobic residues fail to override the unfavorable contributions of charged and polar residues, then what? Well, then apparently there is no conformation transition to which starting from a denatured state is spontaneous. This means the protein never folds. So you see the ability to fold is basically a competition between charge, polar and hydrophobic residues. A protein is called ordered if the hydropathy included in the sequence is enough to drive spontaneous folding. If there is not enough hydropathy, the protein cannot fold and remains unstructured forever. These proteins are called intrinsically disordered proteins. So, ordered and disordered, we find two different types of proteins. What marks their difference? Well, it is a threshold balance of charge polar and hydrophobic residues present in the sequence. This balance was discovered by Vladimir Uvereski in 2000. Uvereski calculated two simple parameters, the mean net charge and the mean net hydropathy of a polypeptide chain using only the information of its amino acid composition. The hydropathy and charge scales used to generate this plot are also provided here. In this charge hydropathy space, he observed that proteins that are experimentally known to fold into globular structures cluster together in the low net charge, high net hydropathy region, while proteins that are unable to fold spontaneously cluster together in the high net charge, low net hydropathy region of the space. 
The separating line denotes the optimum net hydropathy required for spontaneous folding for a given net charge under physiological conditions. You can see the equation of this separating line in the left. This plot is sometimes referred to as the Uvarovsky plot and this separating line as the Uvarovsky line. Of course, with the availability of new experimental data, the exact equation of Uvarovsky line has changed over the years. The most recent version that we know was published in 2014 in Chemical Reviews Journal and you can see the revised equation of Uvarovsky line on the right hand side. Let me finish this discussion by telling you about two exciting facts. A protein that never folds is highly dynamic in nature. You cannot see these proteins in X-ray crystallography. Sometimes a particular region or a particular domain of the full protein is disordered. In these cases, if you try to take X-ray crystallographic image of the protein, the disordered regions remain absent from the crystallographic map. They behave like ghosts. They are there, but so dynamic that you cannot see them. Ordered proteins, on the other hand, can fold and they can be crystallized and they can be seen in X-ray crystallographic maps. So remember guys that all the images of the proteins you see in your textbook or in internet or in protein data bank, they are all ordered proteins.